Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm Scavenger. Welcome to another episode of Chasing Sunsets. It's been a little while. I've been busy, but I'm back. We're continuing Chapter 8, and we will get through this, okay? All right. Let's go ahead and get into it. Like I said, this is Chasing Sunsets. Okay, before we get started, if you missed anything from previously, you can go back and watch it. There should be uh, some sort of link somewhere popping up where you can go check out the full playlist. However, currently, we're at the Sea Star Restaurant, uh, Tunnelu Harbor, five minutes uh, after the, you know, wherever we left off in the last video. Okay, yeah, we're, we're, we're meeting up with her, Lisa. When you arrive, you quickly spot Lisa waiting in the lobby. Wow, you look... Lisa's eyes narrow and an expression somewhere between amusement and suspicion. I guess I just haven't seen you dressed up for a night out in the town before. So I look. You look like my vocabulary lacks the polish to do you justice. Your delivery barely avoids sounding like rote flattery, causing a subtle thaw in her gaze. Almost laid it on too thick. A bit more confidence and you'd have sounded just like a player. You're even testing me at dinner? It's so cute, you think I'll ever stop. Honestly, it never even occurred to me. That means you've been paying attention. Let's get seated. George should be here shortly. You sit down and begin perusing the menu when you hear the faint buzz of Lisa's phone. Hmm. And George is running late. Perfect. What did you want to talk to me about anyway? Shouldn't Jay be here? We mostly wanted to get a sense of how you're holding up after, you know. I'm fine, really. It only hurts when I laugh. Hmm. Lisa's expression is exasperated for a moment before becoming more empathetic. We, I am not just worried about your physical health, Alex. An experience like that is enough to make anyone revisit their priorities. Ah, uh, want to hear a secret? Lisa's lip curls subtly in anticipation. I mostly just feel like a weight's been lifted. It was not knowing what happened to mom and dad that was killing me. So, no nagging worries about the bad man breaking out of jail and finishing the job? Well, I'll probably have them now. Thanks for that. Lisa stares at you intently, as if trying to define your thoughts when her phone buzzes again. Jesus, George. Longer delay than expected? It's just going to be you and I tonight, I'm afraid. As you're about to respond, the server arrives. A beautiful evening for a beautiful couple. Have you had a moment to review the menu? We have a wonderful sea bass tonight with a mango compote. Served with her a house. I don't know these words, man. I don't go to fancy restaurants. I don't make this kind of money. Come on. Stop throwing these words at me. Out of the corner of your eye, you notice Lisa hasn't even looked at her menu yet. Perhaps I can start you off with a beverage? Uh, yeah. Order for both of you. Wait for Lisa's input. I'm going to order for both of us. I'm going to try to be a man here. We'll start with the 2020 Apostle, whatever the fuck that is, please. Excellent choice, sir. The lovely lady will have the ribeye, medium rare, with potato puree. What's tonight's vegetable? We have a lovely pork belly braised asparagus tonight, or a summer squash medley. You glance at a bemused Lisa, who simply arches an eyebrow, offering no lifelines. The asparagus will be perfect. And for the gentleman? I'll have the same, with peppercorn demi-glace. Very good, sir. I will return with your bottle momentarily. As the server briskly departs, Lisa regards you quizzically. Only two men have had the balls to order for me. It's not a competition, Lisa. Is that confidence or arrogance, I wonder? Neither. I noticed you enjoyed Cabernet Sauvignon during the first conference call. Is that so? As for the steak, everything about you screams carnivore to me. Were my instincts wrong? Lisa ponders you with renewed curiosity before speaking again. Well, whether by luck or observation, you chose almost perfectly. Almost? I take my steaks medium. Meh, nobody's perfect. Tell you what, try one bite. If you don't like it, we'll send it back. 
If I don't like it, I'll just think up a particularly unpleasant task for your last day. You mean... Yes. Lots of reading. And math. Oh, fuck. So, Mr. Campbell, how do you think our little game has gone? The advised one or George's little matchmaker play? Is this where I'm supposed to act surprised and deflect? I know this whole production was aimed at forcing Jay and I to mend fences. Well, aren't you just a big fat eavesdropper? Are you saying that in my position, you wouldn't have listened in? He said ponders that before speaking again. If you were listening, you also know that I didn't approve of any of this. Well, as fucked up as it was, I can't argue with the results. That's the understatement of the year. Have you two actually fu- You returned Lisa's earlier sardonic stare in response. You have fucked. Of course you have. Wow. I can't deny the two of you are greater than the sum of your parts. When you're clicking. Jay's scores are 21% higher on days you two are working together. Really? Yeah, and you make roughly half as many mistakes on those same days. Alright, well, the first one arrives. And then the dinner. To your pleasant surprise, Lisa is like a completely different person in a casual setting. Conversation flows easily, and a second bottle of wine disappears. Followed by a third. At last, the server hands you the check and departs with a cordial farewell. So, full disclosure, I have never ordered medium rare because I thought it would be too raw. And the verdict? It was amazing, and I'm kicking myself that I needed you to bamboozle me into trying it. Before you can reply, Lisa's phone buzzes. Her neutral expression turns into one of disgust as she looks at her phone. I'm sorry, Alex. I have to take this. Without a word, Lisa gets up and walks resolutely towards the entrance. Several minutes pass, and she doesn't return. Damn, she's been gone a while. I hope I don't have to pay for all of this. My balance is getting really low. Five more minutes slip by before you groan and drop your emergency cash on the table. I hope everything's okay. All right, now um, we're at the overlook of this Sea Star restaurant a few minutes later. Oh, what's going on? going on here Lisa you step into the evening air and see immediately that Lisa hasn't gone far hey everything okay the server was worried that the food didn't agree with you sorry Alex I just didn't have that call factored into this evening polygene stuff or the latter you walked up next to Lisa and looked out across the sea with her quietly for a moment the moonlight on the sea and the first chill you've felt in weeks whispers longingly of home. It's funny. I used to just mostly think of this island as mom and dad's escape. But after everything that's happened here, I have my own claim to it now. After an extended silence, Lisa stirs. I didn't mean to ditch you with the check, Alex. I'll make it right. Don't worry about it. Can you even call us friends until you've dined and dashed at least once? Surprisingly? You do the quiet, supportive thing pretty well. Good to know. And you pull off the angry, hot thing better than most. I'm aware. Lisa finally turns to face you, her composure a far cry from her usual cool demeanor. Alex, do I seem like an indecisive woman? Uh, no. Weak-willed? Wishy-washy? None of those words leap to mind when your name comes up. Then help me understand why when someone I've been angry at for 10 years calls out of the blue, somehow I can't manage to tell them to fuck all the way off. I might have some perspective you'd find relevant. Oh, I'm all ears. Well, uh, feelings don't always make sense. They just are. But sometimes we make choices because of them that also doesn't make much sense. Are you talking about you or me right now? Why not both? Knowing more about your situation than I probably should, that actually helps a little. All part of the service. Now, may I have the honor of walking you home? Lisa looks at you appraisingly and arches an eyebrow in challenge. No, Alex, I don't think that you may. 
You're going to help me dance off some of this negative energy. Uh, given that my insides were just on the outside a few days ago, that thing seems like a really bad idea. Fair point. Lisa pauses for a moment, weighing the options. Tell you what, let's get a drink at the club, and maybe I can be convinced to slow dance. I'll take you to the club, but you're putting your card down for the tab. Done. All right, now we're at the wet spot. That's an interesting name for a club, but uh, I, I don't oppose. Being a weeknight, you find the club less packed than usual and finding seats easy. If you want to get your dance on, I'll get the drinks. Lisa hands you her credit card and eyes you thoughtfully. Surprise me. All right, then. Be right back. Arriving at the bar, an entirely expected familiar face greets you. Oh, this was also the cab driver, and she's also been our bartender before. Well, well, we have an island celebrity tonight. Hey, Kylie. Should you even be clubbing after... Kylie looks at your abdominal area meaningfully. I'm just having a couple drinks. Here, I'd like to open a tab. Let me rephrase. Are you in any condition to clap those cheeks that just walked in with you? <laughs> oh, she's my boss. Sort of. It's complicated. All I know is that every time I see you, you're pulling even more top shelf ass. I never really had a chance, did I? You definitely did, Kylie. The timing just never quite lined up for us. Look at you pulling my pride out of the fire. So, what are you and your boss drinking tonight? Bedford Reserve. Neat. And a gray swan martini for the lady. First round's on me tonight. I'll bring them out to you. And Hioli, for what it's worth. I'm really glad you pulled through. I don't know what Hioli means. But uh, I said it, and I probably said it wrong. It's okay. Thanks, Kylie. Finding Lisa nearby, you're somewhat surprised to find she hasn't hit the dance floor yet. Change your mind? No, just thinking. Tell Lisa about your hospital visitor. Keep it to yourself. I'm going to tell her. I, th I think honesty has worked out well for me so far, so, you know. I better loop her in. We're going to need to come up with a plan. Hey, I need to tell you something that's been bothering me. Lisa snaps out of her introspection and gives you her full attention. Oh, what's on your mind, Alex? When I was in the hospital, I had a visitor come from the consulate. While her expression reveals nothing, you think you see something hardened in her eyes. Let me guess. He had questions about certain canceled patents after Sophie's little reveal. Yeah, he wants them resubmitted. Offered some carrot. And lots of stick. Fucking politicians. Always looking for an angle. You'd better be smart with that stick. He said I'd have trouble with the Tonalu police over the yacht thing if we balked. Lisa chuckles ironically. Well, that's certainly one way to solve the inheritance issue. Really, Lisa? That's so fucked up. Mm-hmm. And what's the carrot? The Tonalu PD issue goes away. And he hinted that maybe the prize or lawsuit does too. Did you happen to get a name? Brian Ferguson. Looked like every government bottom feeder ever. As Lisa ponders what you've just told her, the music segues into a slower song. This could solve a lot of problems. Sounds like his patron is cutting Prizer loose. You can't seriously be considering this. Lisa only smirks mischievously at you in response. Come, dance with me. Without waiting for your answer, she stands up abruptly and pulls you to your feet. Uh, hmm. Nope, this is happening. But the odds of reopening that wound go way down if you just go with it, Alex. A moment later, you're on the small dance floor across from the statuesque brunette. I'm not going to break, Alex. Put your hands on me. You're about to make a snarky comment when you notice a familiar face across the room. You pull Lisa firmly against you and begin shuffling to rotate him into Lisa's line of sight. Lisa's face rests against yours, and you can feel her warm breath on your ear. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's the guy, isn't it? Yeah. God. He looks like such a chode. Just keep dancing, and act like you didn't see him. 
In close quarters, Lisa's warmth and scent create an allure you were unprepared for. Do you think he overheard us? Over this classic panty dropper? Not a chance. Ah, so that's what this dance was all about. No, I needed to feel something, and I won't if you don't start looking more into this. All right, then. Game on. You pull Lisa into you once again, eliciting a gasp. Well, now, that's more like it. You separate slightly and look her in the eye. You never answered my question. No, I never consider his offer, but we will need to come up with a plan. Just not here. Fair enough. Then can I be bothered for one slow dance, Miss Hendricks? To nobody's surprise, Lisa's skill in the dance floor is on par with her business acumen. She uses subtle hip movements and a technique that looks stunning without showing you up. You turn her and she expertly follows through, returning to face you with an approving smile. Mmm. So you can dance. I'm not a mouth breather. Just don't ask me to sing. As the song winds down, Lisa rests her head contently on your shoulder. You're in no condition to dip me, so don't even think about it. It didn't cross my mind until you mentioned it. And he's gone. So he is. And look, our drinks finally arrived. Lisa returns to the table with predatory grace, and you can't help but to drink in her curbs. There's definitely some sexual tension between us. And that dance didn't help. Lisa takes a sip of her drink and gazes at you playfully over the rim. Alex, stop brooding. We'll figure this out. Who's brooding? I came here to unwind, and whether you know it or not, so did you. Ask her about the phone call or leave it alone. Should I ask her? I'll ask and see what she says. Or wait, she wants to unwind. Why would I ask her about it? Maybe I'll leave it alone. Fair enough. Here's to unwinding. Lisa looks at you contemplatively for a moment. Before we go, there's one thing I wanted to tell you. Huh? Don't tell George I've let the cat out of the bag, but you're both ready to lead Polly Jean. When was this decided? George had his mind made up after the boat incident. And you? My decision is somewhat more recent. Honestly, I still have reservations, but not because I don't think you're up to it. You're not the only one, but that's a conversation for another day. And Alex, thank you for being awesome tonight. Well, I figured I've owed you one since picking you up at the airport in the rolling casting couch. Yeah, you did. And wow, your little bartender friend pours like a boss. I've got a bit of a buzz going on. So now can I walk a lady home? I'd actually be a little salty if you didn't. Alright, now we're at the Tampu Beach. One short walk later. Uh, so the walk is over. We're to whatever destination we were going to. You're about halfway home enjoying the night breeze when Lisa begins fiddling with her heels. On one hand, this walk is nice. On the other, I really didn't dress for a boardwalk hike. There's a suspiciously conveniently placed bench over there. Let's chill for a bit. Lisa gives you a graceful nod and sits with a relieved sigh. It's only a few more blocks. I mean, I could carry you if push came to shove. Please, Stitch bitch. Like I couldn't just walk barefoot on the sandy... What's that? Following Lisa's gaze, you see what looks like a flashing light some distance away. Is that... Morse code? L. G. P. D. Nope. I don't think so. Whatever it is, it's getting closer. After your experience on the yacht, an unknown visitor sets your heart beating faster. On the off chance this is trouble, is it okay if I die laughing at you trying to run in heels? Absolutely not! Before you can reply, a familiar figure steps out of the shadows and into view. Jesus, Amanda, what are you doing out here this hour? Everyone else is safe and asleep. I noted your absence and began an investigation. An investigation? Type E. Health and welfare check for friends and family. 
Well, as you can see, there's nothing to worry about. You are being followed by a man I am unfamiliar with from the club. Oh, Brian Ferguson, my consulate shadow. I followed him to a hotel jail. If he is a diplomat, he is not behaving like one. What are those on your feet? These are my croc lights, crafted specifically for nocturnal emissions. Yeah, I'm never calling them that. You do realize they give away your position immediately, right? Of course. I only activate them when I wish to be seen. Tell me again why you're stalking us. Mallory, Jay, and Alex were nearly killed because I was not more vigilant. Amanda, you can't think like that. Mallory's only alive because you spoke up. Nevertheless, I will not allow it to happen again. I promise everyone is being very careful now. I also saw an opportunity to surreptitiously observe courtship in real time. Courtship? Amanda. It simply reinforces to me that traditional courtship is an outdated method of attracting a mate. Well, this is awkward as fuck. I am not about to take dating advice from a girl wearing croc lights. My intention was not to cockblock. Cockblock? Uh. <laughs> Lisa stands up indignantly and, stare and glares at you. I'm fine to walk now, Alex. Are you coming? As you stand to follow, Amanda puts her hand on your arm. Hmm? I will find out more about this Brian Ferguson. Alright, we're at the Nesbitt residence. And uh, this is after the walk, I think. Or it's well after midnight, that's for sure. As you approach Bianca's home, you're struck by how different it seems after dark. Well, this evening may not have gone as planned, but I can't say I didn't enjoy it. Well, look who's been practicing their sweet talk. The usual edge of her sarcasm seems oddly absent, and she brushes against you as you walk. So, you know the compelling reasons to fly back earlier? Alex Campbell, are you fishing to see if I have a boyfriend waiting for me? I assume from our earlier conversation that you might be holding out. And Lisa's laugh is musical. Love and sex are two very different things. I hear that a lot. But I find attachments have a way of crashing all parties eventually. I won't pretend I haven't had my favorite toys, but they all eventually bore me. The problem with discarding toys is eventually you find someone better at it than you. I'll burn that bridge when I get to it. Well, here we are. Yep, here we are. She turns toward you as if to say goodnight, and much of the sadness in her eyes has faded. I don't know what I was expecting, but I really did have a good time tonight. You know, I did too. It's been a while since I've had a chance to cut loose like this. Good night, boss. Good night, Lisa. All right, we're still at the Nesbitt residence the next morning. Now, I think if I would have done different things, there was a possibility to have uh, an interaction with her. Uh, I can't remember what that is. But I, I've tried, I've tried both routes, and uh, there's definitely, definitely uh, an interact, an interaction that could be had there. But that's for you to check out if you want to play the game. I'm not going to tell you everything about this, and sometimes you just got to find out for yourself. Anyway, if you like this episode of Chasing Sunsets, let me know by smacking the like button, subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, and uh, if you'd like to support and you'd like some uh, spicy content that I can't show here, go check out the Patreon page. And that is all. You guys have a good one. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Scare, what do you have me making, man? Oh, scare.